Uh, our next speaker is Sitar Dorafshan. Um, uh, Sitar is an assistant professor of civil engineering at the uh, University of North Dakota in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Uh, he got his undergraduate and MS degrees in Iran and his PhD at Utah State University, and all of those were in civil engineering. Uh, he was a research associate at Turner Fairbank Highway Research Center at the Federal Highway Administration, and he joined the faculty at, at University of North Dakota in 2020. His um, main, sorry, oh, uh, his main areas of research are non-contact and autonomous sensing, smart structural condition assessment, concrete 3D printing, and material sustainability. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so uh, our title uh, for the talk today is the Artificial Intelligence in Condition Assessment of Concrete Structures. So it's a little different from uh, what you saw in the mixed design. Why do we need to uh, co do condition assessment in concrete? We have a variety of types of defects. Some of them happen on the surface. The most famous one is crack, which could be a result of spalling, or it could happen before or after, and there are different types of cracks. And there are a lot of them that happen on a subsurface level, that they show no uh, visual or surface manifestation. A very prime example of that are rebar corrosion and the subsequent uh, delamination of concrete, which wouldn't, again, show any visual uh, manifestation until it reaches to that spalling stage. And there are other types of uh, concrete defects that happen through chemical reaction. One of them is aging or carbonation that happens. And uh, it's argued uh, that it's one of the onsets of rebar corrosion in most old uh, reinforced concrete structures. The way we do it now, condition assessment, is to find those defects, basically. And similarly to uh, medical doctors that use a variety of non-invasive techniques, we also tend to start using non-destructive, non-invasive methods just to be one of, because we want to preserve our infrastructure. Um, there are a lot of factors to incorporate when you do a, a full condition assessment, and one of them is, of course, defect detection, but you also need to take into account age, the traffic, environmental factors of that specific structure. And our condition assessment is based on both quantitative and qualitative methodologies. What we do nowadays, we use some sort of human sensing, either vision or hearing, to detect certain defects. If it's visual, if it has surface manifestation, our human vision is relatively good and accurate to detect it. Versus it's, if it's subsurface, things get a little challenging. You see a chain dragging on the right, where every inspector would hear to the chain being dragged on the concrete deck and detects the lamination. If you don't know what, how that concept works, every time you go to Sam's Club and pick up a melon and you tap on it, and like, hmm, that's what they do on bridge decks. So surprisingly, they're doing a pretty good job. So I should not, <laughs> I, should make that, uh, I should make that comment. Uh, so what are the incentives for autonomy? Uh, we, we're, our infrastructure is aging. You've heard that enough, I'm sure. And we probably going to need more and more data, more comprehensive ways of data collection for defect detection. Early defect detection is going to be the next challenge in uh, structural health monitoring. With the existing methodologies, we have a lot of human bias. Um, we also going to start having the abundance of data. So as I mentioned, non-destructive evaluation and testing methodologies. And we also introduced the non-contact sensing in infrastructure condition assessment. Arguably, it's one of the oldest applications of robotics in anything civil. And with, with, with that, now we're collecting more and more data with different uh, sensors. So in order to both leverage from what we are collecting and things that we need to start collecting in near future, you need autonomy. And autonomy can happen with data collection or data analysis. With data analysis, that's where you start seeing artificial intelligence role. Now, uh, with the focus of our talk, there are several ways, as opposed to traditional ways of data collection, that we can collect data, basically replacing that human sensing with some sort of uh, non-destructive evaluation and testing method. And they normally, use, uh, they normally uh, work on a physical property here you can see some of examples of one-dimensional data and two-dimensional data. Those are the more uh, common 
types of data we collect in the realm of non-invasive non evaluation. You see ground penetrating radar, impact echo on the top, and then you see visual and thermal imagery at the bottom, and we're going to have examples of each. A quick uh, generalization or classification of AI, AI at least the, as, as it pertains to me, is that either you have the types of AI that it, it really depends on the amount of agency or autonomy you give them, right? If you tell them, find certain things for me, you have supervised learning. You know what you're looking for, so you're using AI as an advanced statistics, pretty much, to find certain things. The simplest way of we use AI, we always use that is linear regression. But then, with the, as data gets more challenging, you might use different methodologies, specifically when it comes to uh, two-dimensional images, so variety of image segmentation, clustering. These are uh, relatively easy to implement and uh, find. Uh, and, and on the other hand, they're very uh, application-specific. On the other hand, you have unsupervised learning. With these guys, uh, they're kind of trained or they're kind of designed to uh, simulate what happens in a human brain. You have all these neurons and the pathways are unknown. Pathways are made through our experiences from our five senses. Same thing happens with these artificial neural networks. We, we feed them certain types of data in order to create those pathways, eventually to get them respond to what we want them to respond to. So they would need annotated data set, just like a kid needs some sort of supervised learning. Like, yeah, that's a chair, that's hot, that's cold, that's tasty, that's poisonous. So they work the same way, but imagine instead of saying that, the parent is the researcher telling the AI model what it needs to be detecting. Concrete crack, delamination, subsurface defects. We start with crack uh, defect detection and it's a visual surface defect, so uh, one way to look at it is to see if these images that are basically matrix, uh, so they're made of uh, two-dimensional data, uh, look as a, as a user and see what are those defects have in common. In, uh, in this case, uh, we have started using image processing, deep learning, and a hybrid method, method to detect uh, surface defects on concrete, and as you can see, Dr. Thomas is the co-author on the paper, so you know it's good. So we uh, we use the uh, semantic segmentation. Um, uh, we the human, or in that case me, the inspector, uh, semantically segmented the image, which you see the overlay blue is on it. Here are the image intensities. So what you can infer, these cracks resemble a different intensities. They're darker, so normally lower intensity in the image. And they also resemble some sort of edge, right? So if you use gradient-based methodologies or AI, you can detect the cracks. And we used one uh, specifically in this case was a Sobel or Roberts, ironically, edge detector. So with that, uh, we saw that you can see the red one is the result of the AI. And that's the second next to it. The third one next to it is the binary image. And the bottom ones are what you get as, that we use for performance metrics. So you see how many cracks were wrong or pixels were labeled wrong and how many were labeled right. Far to the right, you have a, so this in, in the middle, it's a supervised learning method, unsupervised learning method. The user told the AI what it needs to be detecting, edges and low intensity pixels. On the right, we use the neural network, more uh, uh, commonly known, they are uh, uh, convolutional neural network. And it's an image base, so it divides the images, the original image into tiles, and in each tile it looks for certain features uh, that resemble cracking. And again, as you can see in those uh, yellow boxes, you still have some false positives. Now, moving to subsurface defects, uh, you, I'm going to uh, briefly touch upon impact echo and infrared thermography that we did. Uh, if you've done bridge research and bridge deck evaluation, both of them are very common. With the uh, Impact echo, the idea is that delamination, subsurface defects, will create a different type of response or echo when you, when you impose your medium to an incident seismic wave. 
it's basically a fancy chain dragging. So instead of human hearing, you have an accelerometer that is listening to these impacts. And you get uh, time series. But uh, the accuracy, the methodology that currently used to analyze that data is based on peak frequency method that measures the thickness of the slab by converting the time series into a fast Fourier transformed version of it. So if you use the conventional method, you see uh, here are the uh, slab with known defects. And on the top, those redder spots, those are the how close we were in terms of defect detection. And you see the location of actual defects on the decks with the, uh, with the white rectangle. Uh, you know, these are on two different set of de edges or, or uh, decks. And as you can see in both cases, the one in the right in the middle, the right at the bottom, they are the results of the AI model that we developed. So we trained on a certain amount of decks, told the network what to look for, and it did a better job. But you take the same model and take it to the practice, now you get a lot of inconsistencies, right? One of the main reasons for that is because we don't really have a ground truth for our uh, real infrastructure in terms of subsurface defects. So you see all sorts of, we tried four or five different types of AI model on top of the peak frequency method. And you can see there's no consistency, but there are certain areas that were detected to be defects in all of those. So that's a venue that you can maybe use ensemble learning, combine all these deep learning, machine learning methods to come up with a superior AI. The other one is use the, uh, the application of IRT. Um, I know I'm getting over time. Uh, basically, the idea is to use uh, or do, to measure the amount of thermal energy emitted by the surface of the concrete at any point using IRT. And if you have delamination, that changes the thermal mass and eventually changes the uh, IR signal. And you can, we kind of came up with a methodology to annotate this data in real time every time we inspect something using IRT cameras, compare it with the chain dragging results, giving us the fact that I said there's no uh, real annotated data set for bridge deck evaluation. What we found when we compared these, uh, and this is a uh, um, unsupervised learning method, basically we were trying to uh, match the white spots on, on the top with the AI to the bottom one that you have the ground truth. And again, even the best performing uh, AI only achieved the accuracy about 70%, as you can see. There's quite a lot of, about consistency between the two binary images at the bottom. <clears throat> so a couple of takeaways. Pay close attention to the need if you want to use AI. Um, normally, if you, if you can explain a phenomenon um, with the simplest explanation, that's probably the right one. So um, don't, using a more complicated uh, solution for a simple problem always doesn't always uh, turn out to be great. Um, Depending on what type of methodology and data you use, the te technology readiness level for, for these AI technologies could vary significantly. I would argue uh, when it comes to IRT, there's still quite, for, quite knowledge gaps for us to, to conquer before we use this and commercialize it. But other techniques like Impact Echo or GPR have been commercialized. Um, we know we can get uh, very acceptable and uh, generic accuracies with AI under the right circumstances. And we should be aware that the type of AI model also match with the problem we have depending on the availability of the data, for instance, which is the next bullet point. Basically, uh, these unsupervised learnings are very good, but without the enough data, they can, uh, they can underperform even simple image processing or conventional AI methods. That's it. I'd like to acknowledge a couple of colleagues uh, and uh, students who helped me. Uh, Dayakar at, uh, Lavadia is, a, is now an assistant professor at University of Mary in North Dakota. And I also acknowledge the work of uh, three of my uh, PhD students, Ibrichi Ichi, uh, Faiz Jafari, and Bushra Basharatian on this presentation. Thank you so much.